Today I would like to show you how to make these cute little buttons out of old book pages and how you can use them in your junk journal. So for this project I will create a page in my junk journal calendar for the month of May. <laughs> Hi there, this is Luisa Heinzel. Welcome to my channel Junk Journal Art. Nice to see you here. Today I'm here with a little tutorial that was a requested tutorial. So um, yeah, some of you asked me um, how I made those little buttons here because I posted a photo on my social media and yeah, some of you wanted to know how I made these and I can tell you they are really, really easy to make and I absolutely love them. So um, I think we all love to use buttons in our junk journals. Buttons are, are a really, really great thing and they are yeah, some kind of highlight on junk journal pages. But the problem with real buttons is that they are really, really thick. So for example, I have yeah, let me choose a smaller one. Uh, <laughs> Not well prepared, sorry. So let me take a normal button. So this is a normal button made out of, I don't know, button material, <laughs> plastic, I don't know. And if you want to use these in your junk journal, it would be, of course, a great um, focal point or a great highlight for your page. But when you glue it, then it's really, really um, thick, as you can see. And when you, for example, put it to the page of your junk journal, for example, somewhere here, and you glue it or you sew it here, and you want to write on the other side of this journal, on the other page, then you will have a problem because this button is so thick that you um, yeah, can't write really comfortably. Is that an adjective in English? I don't know. <laughs> you know what I mean. And when you compare these buttons here so this is one of the um, book page buttons that i made and this is the other one and when you compare this you can see that my version of those buttons is really really thin so this is yeah <laughs> i would say um flat enough to glue it to a page so that you can still journal on the other um, page when you flip it around so yeah as you can see, it would look like a normal button if you would put it somewhere here into a junk journal and it's flat enough to, yeah, <laughs> to use it in your journal and to write on the back side. So, yeah, <laughs> I'm really, really um, excited about this project. I think um, some of you, yeah, when you are a junk journal pro and you make junk journals for years, then you know those little self-made buttons. No, it's not self-made. <laughs> those handmade buttons i i learned that um yeah the english people laugh about the german speaking people when we say self-made buttons self-made gesso self-made structure paste because it's not correct but it's so similar to the german word that i often changed those words sorry so but i recognized it <laughs> so these handmade buttons are really cute and I'm so in love and perhaps you know them already and perhaps you want to skip this tutorial because you know how to make them then please skip a little bit forward in this video um, to see what I make with these buttons in my junk journal calendar because later on in this video I will show you um, how I decorate this page here so this is my front page for the month of May and I will um, make a little collage thing and uh, yeah some kind of a mixed media page here for my junk journal calendar using those buttons. Perhaps you are interested um, even if you don't want to see the tutorial. <sighs> okay, so let's start. <clears throat> so for this project, as I said, you will need some book pages. I have chosen this hardcover book here. You can use any book pages that you have. I think if you make junk journals, you will have book pages. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I think you have uh, really much book pages at home and often we have book pages that we don't need especially those that have this yeah i would say normal writing so this is not a special uh, lettering it's not very old not very uh, beautiful it's a normal book and i think we often have those book pages um 
yeah and we don't know what to do with them so one thing that you can do with them is making those buttons so i have to put them here so that my camera screen looks a little bit more <laughs> more beautiful because yeah look at this i think those are also great for um, taking photos or that stuff so for decoration around something that you want to make a picture of i think that can look really really cute if you want to look at this here with my cup of coffee i think that looks really really nice okay so um we will need some book pages as i said and i um decided that i want to use them um in the book so let me uh, tell you um, this in detail. So <coughs> as you can see, I already teared some pages out here. So I, I left this end papers here. So as you can see, this is glued here a little bit strange. So I left this and then I take this first page and flip it over so that I can take my glue stick and put the glue here to this page. For me, that's the easiest way to put the glue to this page um, when it's um, still in the book. I will show you in a second um, why this is, I think, a good idea. So it's a, it's my idea, so it has to be good. <laughs> but I think you will see the same when you see why I'm doing it like this. So um, if you want to glue this, make sure that everywhere on this page is glue so that the pages um, stick together really really well and that you don't have areas where there's no glue because yeah later on we have um, several layers of book pages um, in this one button and we don't want to come uh, we don't want that the layers come apart so yeah that they don't fall apart then I take this page here this first page here's the glue and then I just do it like this take a brayer and go over this here to make sure that it is really um, flat that I don't have air bubbles or something like that and now I can take this both pages so these are the glued pages now glued pages and then I can tear them out and now I have these pages glued together really exactly so as you can see they are sticking together here in a really regular way so nothing from the page below comes out here and that's yeah i think uh, some kind of an important point <sighs> sorry about this noises my prayer is really strange i i hope that's not too <laughs> uh strange in your ears so um now I have this here and then I go on like I did it before. Now I take this page and in this way, when, when you do it like this, you can make a um, surface for your uh, buttons that is um, the same thickness everywhere on this uh, paper. So, um, of course, you could also use yeah some... Um, scraps or that stuff you could use nearly every paper material that you want to glue together because um, we will only see the top layer here so you could use any kind of junk paper for the layers uh, that are below the top layer um, but when you use um, layers that have exactly the same size you will have an easier job later when we punch out the circles so i hope that makes sense so now i take this three pages and just tear them out take my brayer and make this really really flat and this way i will go on until i think that i um, have a material that is thick enough for my buttons and now the problem begins <laughs> because um, perhaps you are asking yourself how many pages shall I glue together for this project and that's not so easy um, it, that's a question that I that, that, that I can't answer to because of course it belongs um, to the thickness of 
the single book pages so this book here has really really thin pages if you have a book that has thicker pages of course you will need not so much layers than when you use um, a book with thinner pages so please um, yeah try to experiment a little bit with the thickness of the book pages um, I took this book here because I don't need it anymore and um, I will do it like that, that I um, use this book for making my buttons. So I just um, decided that when I um, recorded the German version of this video. Um, and I will write on the front of this book that this is my button making book or... <laughs> I think that's that makes no sense. You know what I mean. That I know that I always use this book to make buttons. So that I know the thickness of these pages. And I know how uh, many pages I need to use to make um, yeah, a nice material for this button stuff. So perhaps this is an idea to take always the same book. And as you can see here, are really many pages I think you can um, make endless an endless amount of buttons out of one book and if you are not sure um, if this what you glued together is enough you can take the punch that you want to use to punch this circles out so um, of course you could also use some scissors and cut but I think with such a punch it's much easier and of course it's it's much more regular. I think I'm not able to cut a circle with some scissors that's such regular like this. And if you want to use this punch, of course you can um, choose the size that you want or that you have. You can check if it's um, thick enough by putting this uh, thing here into the punch. And if you can move the punch around really easily you know it's not too thick you also could use an edge of this thing here and make a an example punch to uh, so yeah you can punch out one circle and um, try with your hands if you think it's thick enough and i think it's a little bit um yeah some kind of a personal preference how thick you want to make those if you want to have them really thin so as you can see i can move this around really well you can leave this even with three or four pages i think uh i have four now Ooh, am i right yeah i think i have four now four pages and that's really thin but it's thick enough to make such buttons because the button gets sturdy by adding glue and it's not only the paper that makes this thing sturdy. If you think um, this is too thin, but you are not sure if your punch can get this, of course you can take um, a book page or two, take them out without gluing, put them here on top of this already glued uh, thing, and then you can um, yeah, try it like this, and you will see that this is a little bit harder than before but you can um, still move this around so it will be not too thick if we would glue this both pages here um, on top of this so i will quickly do that glue them together and then i will dry this whole thing with my heat gun so i use a normal embossing heat gun to dry this really quickly and then i will be back and show you the next steps so here I'm back and this is dry now <clears throat> and it's already really sturdy. So yeah, I, I could bend it, but it's it's really sturdy already. And um, one thing that I want to yeah recommend when you dry this is um, when you put it to your table like this and you go over this with your heat gun, then this thing will get a little wave like this. So it will yeah come up from the table. Just um, relax <laughs> and take this page, these pages and turn them to the other side. Dry a little bit from here with your heat gun. Turn it back, dry and so on. So yeah, make a little circle here uh, with this thing. And um, 
<laughs> dry it from this side and from the other side as well this will also make um, the drying a little bit more quick when you make it uh, dry it from this side and from the other side um, if you want to use some water-based mediums um, on your buttons to make them in a special color or that stuff then you should use um, a water soluble glue for this so this glue stick so this is a German brand I don't know if you um, know this in your area but this is a normal glue stick stick and that's not waterproof I know that I don't want to use water like watercolors or that stuff um, so if you want to make some splatters or that stuff, I think that would be no problem. But if you want to go over this with watercolor to color the whole page, then please use some um, gel medium or some Mod Podge or any other waterproof uh, glue for this. So you can uh, also use a glue that you can apply with a paintbrush or that stuff. Um, in the next step, we want to punch some of those things here so i just um, take my punch and as you perhaps recognized i have removed this little thing here this little door <laughs> i don't know how this is called in english so normally here's such a plastic thing that goes into here that when you punch whoo, sorry that when you punch this way that um, the punched pieces don't fall to your table but they will uh, be collected in this little area here on the bottom of the punch i always remove those uh, things here because i can now see better where i punch and then this thing here flies around my head but i don't <laughs> care about that because um yeah i need them here on my table and uh, they go to my table so uh, why uh, to have this little thing here on the bottom that's yeah there's no reason to have this for me um and of course you can also so that's the main reason right why i removed this um you can also see much better where you punch when you use your punch this way so I can go to the other hole. So let me show you in detail for demonstration. I do it really extremely like this, for example. Now you could even make a button that looks like a moon, as you can see here. So let's let's just do this for demonstration. So you could, of course, also make it like this one possibility. And if you don't want to do that, you can see where you have to punch so if you put it like this then you can make it a little bit like this punch and you know that you don't waste um, so much material than when you would punch in the normal direction so yeah hopefully that makes sense and to um, avoid um, wasting material I go around this edge here really uh, yeah carefully so that I don't have much um, of this material left over here so normally when I would use the punch in its normal way and make it the whole way like this then I would have this amount of paper here left over and and that's nothing that's uh, yeah I, I don't know why we should do it like this so I yeah <laughs> you already understood me um, and now I go around this whole thing here like this i think one is possible yes and now you can decide if this amount of buttons um is enough for you or if you want to make more if this is enough for you please don't throw this thing away because this is a perfect stencil this is a perfect thing for your gel uh, jelly plate so you could use this to make a pattern to your page i will show you later um, how i would do that and you could also use this thing for your jelly plate put it to your acrylic paint take it off and you have a wonderful pattern of circles on your jelly plate and you can make really um, awesome things with this so don't throw that away if you want to use the material here in the middle as well you have to search for some scissors. Where are they? I think I <laughs> brought them to their place where they have to be. <laughs> so just take, sorry, just take some scissors. And now I cut along here 
like this. So here it's a little bit uh, tricky because I made this here for demonstration. Normally I could uh, cut a, a straight line like this. And of course you could also use this material for your jelly plate for stenciling or for a collage or that stuff. That would also be a great thing. And I just go around here so that I can use this middle part of this uh, piece here. And then I just punch around here again. Now I will do it a little bit more to the inside because I want this piece here later for my page and want to show you um, what I do with that. So because of this reason, I'm not punching a straight line of circles, but I go a little bit uh, to the left and the right side. And that's also a way, of course, you can make some um, some patterns with this circles that are not such regular than on this other both pieces that we made before and that can also be a nice thing for uh, stenciling and and the jelly plate for example like this okay so we will save this year for later and now <clears throat> we have some uh, circles yeah that's nice <laughs> but of course we also will need um, some uh, holes in the middle that this thing some day can look like a button so i take one and now we have i think in this crafty world we have two possibilities no or three possibilities to make holes into these little things one possibility would be to use where is it you know this book binding tool that has this needle on top and you could poke the hole here into um, the button. I, I can't show you because I don't have it here at hand. Sorry, but you know what I mean. But that way the holes will be yeah, really thin, really, uh, I think, not so beautiful. So um, the other possibility would be to use such a tool, uh, yeah, such a punch that makes one hole. Or, of course, you can also do it with a crocodile. That would be also possible. So the crocodile has um, two sizes of holes. So let me just demonstrate that here with this piece. On the one side, you can make a hole that's such big like this. Of course, that would be, yeah, I would, I would um, say not too big. So let me show you. <laughs> I can't explain that. I think that can look also interesting when you use um, this bigger holes but for my personal preference this is a little bit too much it's it's too big but if you want this for example for art journaling pages or if you only want an interesting element on your page i think that can also be a nice thing but this is really big um and on the other side of this crocodile, you can make a smaller hole, but I found a punch on, so I hopefully this is a punch. I don't know if this is the right word. So this, you know, <laughs> I found this thing and you have um, two of them in, in a set. And this thing here makes really nice holes, especially for those small circles. So this is not in the middle, but I don't care about that. As you can see, this looks much more like a button than this thing before. And because of that, I like to use uh, yeah this thing here. If you are interested in having this thing here, I have um, my Amazon storefront link down below in the description box so that you can check that out i have them there in my amazon storefront and you can um, find them there so and the good thing about this is you can take two or three belonging to the thickness of this material um, of these things and make your holes and this thing will go through it really easily and i think <laughs> yeah my crocodile will be a little bit angry with me i love my crocodile but with the crocodile, you have these little things here that come out of the hole on your desk. With this thing, you don't have this on your desk because here um, on the bottom is a little, yeah, something like a trash can and you can open it 
and then you can have these little things here um, so that you can um, yeah um, take this out really easily um, and throw it away or use it for structure paste or whatever you want so I like that that this don't comes to my table with with punching um, yeah and uh, now <laughs> you can decide of course if you want to make those holes uh, really regular like they would be on a normal button or if you would uh, go out with the holes a little bit from the middle so I like to make this yeah some kind of irregular um, but of course you can decide that by your own and you can also decide which distance you want to have in between of this both holes if you want to sew your buttons with a thread or something like that later to your journal then I would recommend to make the holes a little bit uh, with a, with a little uh, bigger distance for example like this because um, this middle part is is really thin when you make the holes um, nearer together like here so hopefully that makes sense and um, I think this way it's a little bit more durable um, when you want to sew it to your journal with a thread okay so um, I will do this things here later um, because I think you, you already uh, have understood what I did here. So the next step is um, to make these a little, little bit more interesting. So I take another book page and I will just um, distress those buttons here a little bit to um, make them look a little bit more vintage. And when I put this here to my book page to prepare my uh, table, I make sure that I have the buttons with this side here on on my table. So this is the front side. When I um, took my punch, where is it? Ah, here. <laughs> Sorry. When I took my punch, I, I had it in my hands like this, took the punch and made the hole like this. So that this is the front side that I could see before because on the back side when you look closer you can see that the paper comes a little bit to this side so that's the normal thing with those punches but you can see that this is the back side and I don't like that so I turn all my buttons to the front side and put them here to my uh, book page so that I can distress them and um, for this thing here, I will use um, the Distress Ink and the Distress Oxide to show you both effects, um, how that will look when you distress this. So come a little bit closer <laughs> to my desk to see that. So um, for this distressing uh, action here, I use this small brush. So if you want to compare this with my finger, that's a really, really... Um, small brush because um, I want I have a problem with my camera frame so let me put the distress ink here so that's the normal distress ink I want to have the distressing um, yeah let me just do it <laughs> sorry um, I want to have it a little bit more intensive on the outside of this button thing and a little bit lighter to the inside. That's the reason why I'm using this really small brush to make sure that I only get the ink to the to the frame of this button. And I take this thing here and I go to my ink pad like this. So hopefully you can see that. I do it like this and press only this part of the brush to my ink pad to make sure that I don't have ink here on the bottom and then I also make a really uh, extreme angle like this with the brush and I yeah I, I do it really extremely so that you can see what I'm doing I do it like this so like I would yeah <laughs> like I would uh, I don't know I don't know how to explain that so but as you can see this way only the edge of this thing 
gets this darker thing and the middle part is a little bit lighter than the frame hope that makes sense so if you have this other distressing tool where you can do it like this yeah let's try it with this brush and see the difference of course you can also do it uh, with this other distressing tool and go around like this then the middle part will be nearly the same color than the book page had before and perhaps you want to compare this i think this here is blended much better to the inside like this but of course that's also personal preference and you can do it like you want it you could also um, put some more buttons next to each other and cover this whole area and then you could take of course a stencil that has a really thin uh thin sorry a li really uh, small pattern like this thing here so this comes from a food packaging so it's normally not meant to be a stencil but <laughs> i use it for stenciling so it's some kind of plastic thing and then you also of course could put this here on top of your buttons to make some beautiful patterns and not distressing the whole button so let me just do it and then you will <laughs> see the result so this is yeah, because it's not meant to use as a stencil, it's a little bit thick, this material, so I have to go over it a little bit with pressure. But of course, you could use any normal stencil that you have. And then you have this result and you have this little, yeah, this pattern on your um, buttons. And I think that looks also really cute when you put this into a journal, for example, a, a polka dot um, theme journal or that stuff. And if you think, oh, okay, those dots are nice, but I also want the frame, then of course you could also now use your ink and go around this here so that it looks a little bit more vintage than without this here. <sighs> You see, I, I really love these things. Um, and if you think that this frame here that you get with the normal distress ink is not dark enough for you, so let me, um, let um please imagine you have this thing here around with the normal distress ink, then of course you could also use the distress oxide for a second layer that you only put around this frame. So the Distress Oxide, I think, is a little bit more intensive and it makes this frame also a little bit more intensive. I think here you can't see it so well, so let me just do it here. So even if you would um, do only one layer, this would be a little bit more intensive. And um, yeah, I think that would be also really great. So hopefully my camera can catch that. So this is the normal Distress Ink. And this is the Distress Oxide. I, I just realized on my um, iPad that uh, screens the mir the, that um, mirrors the screen of my phone that there's no really distance in the camera. But I can see with my eyes that this is really much lighter than this and this is a little bit more rough. So perhaps you want to try that out and see it with your own eyes. I think my camera can't catch that. And another thing that you can do, <laughs> and I have to say, I never did that before. So let me just take this here away. But I, I just um, thought we could try that. So let me just go around here a little bit with this, whoo, with this ink so that we have a frame. Only a little bit. And then perhaps we could use... A sip of my coffee <laughs> and splatter around here a little bit so I never did that before I haven't tried that I don't know what will happen but I want to try it but let me first <laughs> take a sip because afterwards I can't use it anymore but that's not so uh, important <laughs> I want to show you that so let's try just to get a little bit of this coffee here to the buttons and let's see what effect we can get with that so perhaps yeah you can never have too much coffee so let's do it like this and then 
uh, I will just stop the camera for a moment and dry this with my heat gun um, and then I'll show you the result. Hopefully it's not a fail. Uh, yeah, <laughs> so here I'm back. I would say this is some kind of uh, Luisa Heinzel fail or <laughs> something like that and oh my gosh. I'm just realizing something that you that you perhaps can't see or that you don't know but sorry I have to I have to tell you that I just dried this and thought why did I came to this idea so I think it looks interesting but this effect is is not such extreme or or that stuff so you know what I mean and I thought okay why is it like this so it's some kind of a Luisa Heinzel fail that sometimes happens in my videos if you know my channel you know that that I'm experimenting and then sometimes some fails come out of this so but look here <laughs> this is one of the buttons where I splattered the coffee and here <laughs> on this button if I put my finger here, this is my um, last name in my real life. So it says block and this is my my name, so my last name in real life. Is that possible? I, I think such things only happen to us junk journal people. Normal people and people that have normal craft hobbies they don't have these things. I, I can't believe that. So I definitely will use this button for my page, even if I don't, yeah, like this coffee thing here so much, but I have to use it. <laughs> so, sorry. Let me just distress this here a little bit because I want to have this frame, but I, I, I can't believe that. I can't believe those things. Uh, yeah. Okay. So now we have this and we have to uh, save it somewhere and I just realized I can't use this for my page now because I have to wait until the glue that I will now put onto this is dry. But yeah, I, I will save this for later anyway. So um, the next step that you have to do if you want to make those buttons is to use um, some kind of glue that dries clear and really hard. So I will use this glossy accents cl uh, kleber. Yeah, that's the German word kleber, Luise. In English, it's glue, <laughs> glossy accents glue um, that you can use to seal. Um, yeah, any kind of those projects, and that you uh, um, also can use to make some jewelry. And if you want to look at this, you can see that this is like plastic and you can't break it so even if this is only paper of course and yeah here's only a really thin layer of this glue on top of uh, of this thing here and it's really hard it's glossy and you you can't break it and that's really cool and um, to get the glue here onto this little pieces now I like to take such a wooden stick and then um, I open my glue and I have to say this glue um, is really old and whoo, sorry and I'm using the rest of this glue um, so I don't know if when this glue here is new it is perhaps a little bit more liquid than mine here but you can um, take this and oh my goodness I have to take a needle and and poke the hole sorry I'm back in a second okay so here I'm back so now the glue is coming out. I take this wooden stick here to hold my button in place and then I just apply the glue to uh, the surface here. So I don't know what's happening here, but it will not come out. Okay, so now I have really much and this. Okay, so that's a demonstration thing. Um, please try to avoid things like this because the glue um will will uh dry really hard it takes a time so you have to let this dry overnight but it will um glue 
uh, no, it will dry really, really hard. So you can't get the button off of this paper um, so easy when you have glue on the button and the paper. So like it was before. So you know what I mean. So try to get the glue only um, to the button and not to the paper. And if it's possible, not to those holes. So what I'm doing here is not really uh, good, as you can see. And it's it's this thing here where my name is. Uh, I don't like that. But if this happens, then so just move the glue to the outside here of this thing and make sure that the whole surface is covered with glue and that you... Yeah, if it's possible, so that's not so good what I'm doing here, sorry, that you don't have glue in these holes. So if there is glue, take it carefully, take this wooden stick and go through the hole to make sure that the hole itself has no glue uh, and that it's not closed with glue. Because when this stuff is dry, you will be not able to um, poke a hole through this thing here again. You can't punch it, you can't uh, poke it with a needle or something like that. So make sure that there where the holes are is no glue. So let me just try uh, to show you how I would do it normally without such a glue mistake here. So when the this thing here is is full of glue, then you won't have these problems because here in my case, um, it's coming out much air because this is nearly empty. If this is full, <laughs> you would not have those problems. And then you can apply the glue with this tip of this uh, bottle here. And then you can go around here and just move the glue with this uh, bottle here. And you don't have to use your fingers or this wooden stick or, or something like that. And here on this end, where you... Uh, pressed the stick down of course you have no glue then you can turn it around a little bit make it like this and then cover the rest of it and make sure that you go really to the outside of this whole thing so um, I think it's easier to go around the outside first with the glue and then push it to the inside. That's easier than the other way around. And when you have this, then you have to let it dry overnight. So, um, yeah, don't panic. It will take a time to dry, but it will dry. And when it's dry, it's really hard and really sturdy. If you um, realize that some glue comes from the top of the button to your paper, then just take your wooden stick here and do it like this. Put it to another place where no glue is on your book page and then you can make sure that this will not stick to the book page. But even if you have the problem that this will stick to the book page in, your, in the end, then you can just, when this is dry, take the button and take it off. So that would be no problem um, because the back side is paper and that would be absolutely no problem. So, um, yeah, let me just bring this out of the way. Okay, so, um, yeah, after 24 hours or, yeah, I think 24 hours should be enough, um, it would look like this. So, of course, what I show you here are the buttons that I've shown you in the beginning that I made before, but the other ones that I just put out of the way will look the same when this glue is dry. And now I would like to show you how I would use those in my junk journal. So, for that, I have chosen my junk journal calendar because um, I need a page for May in my junk journal calendar and um, this will be this page here on the left side and because of the fact that my junk journal calendar already is such thick so um, I started this in October the last year so <laughs> it's not from from uh, January but it's from October until now so it's such thick 
that I um, can't um, show you what I do on my page in camera because when I lay it down it looks really strange I can write and and that stuff in it but I can't record a video uh, with this page here it's, it's really um, extreme um, so the first thing that I want to do is I want to make a background that uh, is the same size <coughs> that the, than this page and then I will create it on this background and then um, later on I will glue the page here into the journal and show you how that will look. So for this background I would like to use um, some of the book pages that I also used for uh, the buttons themselves. So I just... Hmm. I just think about using this book page because then I will have a little frame here for some stenciling or that stuff, but then I can't show you that. So let me just check that. I think... Yeah. Um, I will just glue it really quickly like this Oopsala. like this so that I have the width of this thing like this and then I know the width of the thing that I can have here so that's this here but of course I don't like this straight line here so let's just make a little bit more interesting and glue this here. Ooh. Oh my goodness, too much glue. So that's the strange thing about glue sticks that sometimes, but that's not so important because we uh, will glue something on top anyway. So I uh, don't care about too much glue, but I don't want to have this bubbles here. Um, then I have a leftover thing from this paper here so that was yeah this kind of vellum paper that I used on my jelly plate and I just want to use this turquoise part here so perhaps you're wondering why I'm saying turquoise in my camera it looks really blue I, I realized that yesterday but I can't I don't know how to um, change my light that this uh, yeah looks more than it looks in reality I, I sorry i can't explain it and i can't um change my light that it looks like the colors that i see with my eye so uh yeah believe me it's turquoise and it's really <laughs> a really nice turquoise um i have this and i also have this thing here so this is a franken tag i just made this here from some scraps and it was like this and I teared it apart and now I have this half thing here and I want to use that here on this page I don't know how until now but yeah let's see so perhaps we could just make it like this and glue it here so that the writing of the book pages um, comes through a little bit <laughs> oh no was it like this yeah I think so so let's just try it perhaps like this yeah I think I like that and if you want to glue such thin paper like this uh, yeah, kind of vellum paper then please decide if you want to use some wet mediums afterwards like watercolor or that stuff if yes the same thing that I mentioned before with the buttons themselves then please use um, some yeah uh, gel medium or that stuff to glue this um, so that you can make sure that the paper um, don't comes off of your page and I think I will just do it like this and here I will also crumble it a little, little bit perhaps I shall do it here also but I don't know if that is still possible oh yes it, it's possible <laughs> so I, I just try to give this a little bit more texture of course you can also 
glue it flat and I also um, don't do it really extremely here because my journal is already really fat and I don't want to make it too bulky so yeah you know what I mean um, it just started raining and I hope that this is not too extremely for you so sorry I'm in my caravan as you perhaps know and I hope that this is not too extreme in, in the video so yeah please excuse I I, <laughs> I don't like rain so now I am going over this thing here with my um, Distress Oxide Vintage Photo to bring out this structure a little bit more. And I try to do it only on this paper, but I don't know if this is a good idea or if I want to go around here, this, yeah, I think. I try to go around this frame and um, try to get a little bit of this ink here only to the edges of this vellum paper perhaps that looks nice as well mm, you could also go around this here with a stabilo oil pen or some kind of really extreme shading thing that could also look nice but i want to have it a little bit more vintage and i also made another page uh, so for the german version of this video and that um, has also this colors and not this extreme shading with a stabilo pen <clears throat> so uh, that's the reason why i want to make it a little bit yeah some kind of similar so now i think we could just put this thing here on top perhaps like this here to the edge so that gives it yeah some kind of an interesting frame i think you could glue this as a belly band so that you could um, put something behind I don't want to do that here because my uh, journal is already really, really thick and I don't want to th um, stick uh, to um, put anything behind it. So you could also yeah, use it as a tuck spot or that stuff, but I will glue it completely like this because I have no need for tucking anything behind it. I think that looks really cute even if you don't see the color that I see. So um, this rain is really extreme, extreme. So I think I will stop the video for a moment um, in the hope that the rain is a little bit, not so such extreme in a few minutes. So I will be back soon, sorry. Whew, okay, so let's try to go on. I think it's a little bit better now. Hopefully it will stay that calm as it is now. So uh, I will just distress this edge here a little bit to give it the same look like the other paper scraps that I whoo, that I glued before so this comes off a little bit but I don't care about that so that's because it's yeah some kind of Franken paper that I just teared so of course this comes off a little bit but yeah <laughs> it's a junk journal um, the next thing I want to show you is um, how you could now um, in this stadium already use the buttons. So if you imagine you have this page in your junk journal Then of course you could take some buttons and just uh, So that's not such a good example because it has no writing I want to have this optic of the writing in the back side here as well So now you could just put them like this for example here on this line from the glued piece of this tag and you could use three of them or how many you would like and I think that would look beautiful as it is. So I always like to put them yeah, to some kind of edge. So for example here as I showed you or um, it would also look nice here for example um, and I think that's a nice page. So what do you think about that? Please leave a comment what you think about this kind of focal point or highlight for a page. You could use them on, yeah, I think nearly every page that you have. So this is only, yeah, some kind of an example. I would like to make something special with these buttons today. So I would not, um, I will not glue them like they are, but I want to, yeah, <laughs> make some kind of more artsy thing out of it so if that makes sense so i just try to find a position for three of these buttons and i just have to think about that um how that can fit i 
think we will do it like this. So as you can see, I made a triangle out of them. Perhaps this, I, I don't like that this is one line, so nearly one line. So perhaps let's put this little bit more like this and this a little bit higher. So for example, like this. So now this is a an irregular um, rectangle and that's always, I think, a good idea to find the position for three elements. Um, and now I will take a really light pen. So this is the Unipen fine line and it's, yeah, how is this called? Don't know, light gray or something like that. So that I just can go around here to remember the position where the button will be later. You can't see anything, I think, but I see this circle here, here and it's really light and it's only some kind of orientation for what I will do next. You could also use a, um, yeah, a light pencil or that stuff. And if you want to imitate that, use a pencil that you nearly can't see because we don't want to see this circle later. When you use a black pen, for example, and you put the button here later, then of course you will see the black line and we don't want that. The next thing I'm doing is I am searching for my white acrylic paint. Ah, here it is. And I'm just taking a little bit of white acrylic paint, put it here to my thing, and I just realized that I <laughs> totally forgot. Oh my goodness. I totally forgot about this thing here. So I, I, I just wanted to include that. Sorry, I, I said I will include this. Oh my goodness. I'm confused. So, yeah. <laughs> Let's do that. It's not too late. So um, I, I just wanted to show you the effect um, of using this here on your page as well. Sorry, sorry, sorry. So of course you could use this here um, as a stencil and I want to show you that how that will look. So just place it here. And of course you can do that at any time, but before this step I will do next. So with this circle things there. And you can go over this here Hopefully that's not too confusing. And you can make some kind of um, stenciling. So this is really light, um, but it's visible. And I think it's totally enough for this page. You could also, of course, use um, some white gesso or structure paste and go over the thing, uh, this thing here with it. So then you will get a little bit more texture than this is now. I will not do that here because my journal is already really bulky and I don't want to have the page to be too thick. But for art journaling or that stuff, that would be really, really nice. And of course, you could also now use this distressed thing to um, include it to your page. So let me just check where the buttons were before so that I can find a position for this thing. I, I can't see the third circle here it is so um, of course you you don't have to use this in the don't have to use the whole thing you can also do it like this and then perhaps we can just bring it to the page like this I think that would be nice um, for this for gluing this I use um, a tacky glue so don't be confused about this bottle here um, a really kind German subscriber sent me this because I <laughs> never had a tacky glue before and I use this now because um, I can apply the glue really easily with this thin uh, thing here but of course you could use any glue that can glue paper to glue this here and I think that makes it yeah some kind of more interesting now we um, have the same pattern of course this circles that we stenciled and this circles and this circles of course are the same size and I think that that looks yeah really interesting and it's yeah some kind of art journaling page already I think or some kind of mixed media page when you do it uh, this way and now <laughs> when we have this, sorry for this confusion, 
um, we take our white acrylic paint and a brush <clears throat> and then I want to try to make um, some flower petals around this circles and the reason why I made the circles is that I can see where my petals have to go so I am just taking some acrylic paint and I go into this circle and try to get some really loose petals that you get the imagination of a flower and for me it's really helpful to make this circle to get um, the size of these petals really well so I don't have to think about this really long because I know the button and this ne, uh, this thing here in the middle has the right size so that I can go around it. So let's do it here as well. And as you perhaps can see, the Distress Oxide begins to react with this white acrylic paint. And I think that's a really nice effect, um, especially here. Here is only acrylic paint underneath the the white acrylic paint but here the petal begins to get a little bit brown and that's of course a really nice effect especially when you love those vintage projects. So here's the third circle. Let's just do it here. And as you can see I do this really yeah some kind of quickly because I I want to have a loose um, look of this. I don't want to have clear petals of this flower but of course you can do this like you want it. But you can see this is a flower now so there are three flowers. <laughs> and then um, I will just dry that and then I will be back. Okay so here I'm back and I just now take the buttons, some glue and the good thing about these handmade buttons is that the back side is paper. Now you can put them here really easily and glue them really easily. So of course with a normal button uh, that's made out of uh, wood or plastic or, or that button material it would be really hard to glue that. But belonging to the fact that the back side of this thing is paper you can glue this really easily and it will stick there within seconds and I think that's a nice thing as well and I really like that that it is really um, fast to glue that so I think my acrylic paint is a little bit wet here but that's not the problem because it's a junk journal <laughs> okay so let's just glue the third one here and now we have some button flowers. What do you think about this idea? <laughs> Please let me know in the comments what you think about this. And um, yeah, now you could decide if you want to leave it like it is or if you would to do uh, would like to do some, I think it's called stamps for the flowers. So I use this white corrector's pen because it's really white and it's really, um, yeah, I think nice to um, make some abstract things on such kind of page. So I'm just pressing it a little bit and then I try to go down here really loose. So as you can see, I, I made a really abstract thing here, a abstract line that don't has to be closed and I just want to get the imagination that the flower is going somewhere here to the ground. Of course you could do um, some petals here to the stamp as well or what I also like to do to um, yeah, make the imagination of something that's that's coming here from the bottom. I like to do it like this and just make yeah, this group of three dots here and there. And of course you could also do that here on in other areas of this thing um, to bring this whole thing a little bit more together and um, bring some more interest to this page. And the last thing that I want to do for today is um, taking some black uh, watercolor and finish this page with the most yeah fun part of 
of such a thing so i think my water is a little bit white but that's not the problem then we will get some kind of gray splashes now but i think that also will fit so just taking my brush and do it like this to bring some more interest and some more details to this and i don't care about um bringing this paint to the buttons themselves <coughs> that will dry with no problems and it will stay there but i think that looks yeah a little bit more artsy and more uh, like this flowers are living so yeah can't explain that with my weird english but i think you you got it <laughs> okay so i think that's enough so i will let this dry and yeah we'll just show you this a little bit closer so i think you can imagine how this will look when it's dry and i hope you like it so please leave a comment what you think about this if you want to see this here um glued to my junk journal page please follow me on instagram i will post some photos after publishing this video there so i'm at luisa heinzel on instagram you can also see it there um on the bottom of the the video screen i would really love to see you there and yeah perhaps we can get in contact there as well and i hope you like this i hope you will create something like this by your own so if you created something please let me know by tagging me on instagram or facebook or wherever i would love to see your results i hope you enjoyed this video and i hope we will see the next time and you will join the next time as well so stay crafty and stay healthy bye bye